Hello, and thank you for deciding to watch this video. My name is Dia Patel, I'm 14 years old, and I'll be educating you about what phthalates are, how they affect us, and how you can avoid them. So, what are phthalates? First, let's look at plasticizers. Plasticizers are chemical additives used in plastic to make the product more flexible and longer lasting. Phthalates are the most commonly used type of plasticizer and are used in hundreds, probably even thousands of household products. Here's a pretty basic list so you can get the idea. Solvents, vinyl flooring, adhesives, detergents, lubricating oils, automobile parts, plastic clothing such as raincoats, personal care items such as soap, shampoo, nail polish, hairspray, lotion, shower curtains, bath mats, blinds, air fresheners, insulated cloth lunch boxes, plastic wrap, perfumes, garden hoses, inflatable toys, medical devices such as blood storage containers, medical tubing, IV bags, certain children's toys, cable wires, coated fabrics, polyester, synthetic leather, roofing, straws, and even dentures. Yeah, so it's not really a stretch to say that the phthalates are everywhere. Without any in-depth research, it will appear that phthalates are relatively harmless. According to the CDC, there isn't enough evidence to evaluate if phthalates really harm people, though the CDC also claims that there are studies in which phthalates affect the reproductive systems of laboratory animals. According to the FDA, there isn't a clear effect of phthalates on human health at all, and there's a possibility of there not even being one. The FDA also says that reproductive risks coming from phthalates are minimum to non-existent. Studies from non-government organizations have found that exposure to phthalates is linked with breast cancer, developmental issues, decreased fertility, obesity, and asthma, as well as allergies. And while the following information is by no means a total and complete proof that phthalates do indeed give off these conditions, here's a little something to think about. China is a nation that uses the largest amount of plastic in the world. This, though change would be good for the sake of our planet's well-being, is understandable as China also has the highest population to support. However, there are some things to look at to prove our case of there being potential that phthalates really do harm our bodies. As a reminder of our previous slide, phthalates are said to cause obesity, asthma, decreased fertility, breast cancer, allergies, and developmental issues. As China has significant evidence of all but developmental issues and obesity, let's focus on these four. First, we can take a look at China's asthma rates. Overall, as a country, the percentage of asthmatic patients in China is 2%. This is actually pretty good. As of June of 2020, the asthma rate in the entire planet is about 5%. However, in certain Chinese cities, the asthma rate goes up to 11%. As this is more than double the average rate, it's certainly a problem. Not only this, but in the five years between 2008 and 2013, the asthma rate in China went up by an entire 40%. China also does seem to have a fertility problem. In 1970, women were giving birth to an average of six children each. By 1979, in only nine years, the fertility rate had dropped to an average of 2.7 children each. If you were to look at this graph here, you can see that the major drop took place before the introduction of the one-child policy, which happened later on that year. At the time of this fertility drop, China had begun transitioning to a more industrial nation, which could be a factor for the situation. Even today, while the policy is largely relaxed, lower fertility levels remain a problem. In China, the leading cause of death for women is breast cancer. Unfortunately, 1.6 women are diagnosed annually, with 1.2 million passing away as well. As of 2014, 11.1% of all Chinese citizens showed signs of having allergic rhinitis. This is especially bad because it's nationwide, meaning that while some regions might be better off, some other regions probably display even worse allergy statistics. Once again, I'm going to repeat that China's plastic usage and health problems are not enough of a justification to actually prove what phthalates can do to the human body. The previous slides were only meant to provoke thought, and while they don't prove what exactly phthalates do, hopefully you've caught on to the idea that maybe phthalates aren't as harmless as our trusted government sites say they are. Now that we have basic knowledge of what phthalates do, we should dive a little deeper into the topic of what phthalates are themselves. The picture that you see up here is the chemical structure of a phthalate. There are two types of phthalates, high phthalates and low phthalates. 
High phthalates are phthalates with 9 to 13 carbon atoms in their composition, while low phthalates are those with 3 to 8 carbon atoms in their composition. The two most commonly used high phthalates are disononyl phthalate, or DINP, and disoductyl phthalate, or DIDP. The two most commonly used low phthalates are, D are 2 ethyl hexyl phthalate, or DEHP, and dibutyl phthalate, or DBP. Here we can see the proven effects of each phthalate mentioned earlier. The phthalates are in dark green, and their proven effects are in red. Out of all of them, DEHP exposure appears to have the worst consequences, with, with them being carcinogenic, carcinogenic, causing reproductive harm and birth defects. All of these phthalates gradually release from consumer products into indoor environments and settle on floors and other flat surfaces, and even accumulate in dust and air. For example, look at this room. Seems pretty nice, right? Yeah, well let's just say that the lamp is coated with phthalate paint. These phthalates will slowly leach off into the air and dust so that now the entire room is contaminated with phthalates. In real life, there's no way to completely el eliminate phthalate exposure, as phthalates are essentially everywhere. And you can't really wear a hazmat suit for the rest of your life. Oh wait, those are phthalates too. In order to at least avoid phthalates to your best ability, Make sure to minimize your contact with dust. Keeping your room clean is a good way to do this. All phthalates also pass from mother to baby in pregnancy. To minimize risk of exposure in this way, try to opt for home-cooked meals rather than prepackaged ones. Prepackaged meals can sometimes come into contact with plastic during processing and packaging. This is the healthier choice as it is, so even if you don't want to stay away from phthalates, eating in this way would be a pretty good idea, especially if you're expecting. And while we're still on the topic of food, there are certain food groups that have a higher concentration of phthalates than others. Here's a little list of some more common phthalates in addition to DINP, DIDP, and DEHP that we talked more in depth about earlier. The phthalates highlighted in pale red are present in the foods in green. The phthalates, the phthalates highlighted in bolder red are significantly found, often in dangerous levels. While the first three foods are, as a whole, classified as having very high phthalate levels, the bottom two are low-leveled and don't really need to be worried about as much. So, as a recap, phthalates are plasticizers that make plastic more durable as well as flexible. They are incredibly common and pretty hard to totally avoid, even if you're wearing one of these. But there are some things you can do to minimize your risk of any of the impacts that phthalates could cause. First off, clean that room of yours regularly. Next, try to cook your own food rather than relying on packages. Trust me, once you know how to make something at home, it's going to taste way better than what you buy outside. If it isn't, then just blame the artificial flavorings. Avoid the problem foods, which are meat, oils or fats, and milk. And the final way to limit your phthalate exposure is to, is to avoid plastic itself to your best ability. There's no point being afraid of phthalates since they're unavoidable. It's only a good thing to know what they are, as we're around plastic products so much so that you know how to stay away from them. These are my references. These are more of my references. And thank you very much to everybody who took the time out of their days to watch this video. I urge you to make it a goal to clean your rooms, cook more of your own food, avoid meat, milk, oils, and fats, as well as plastic as a whole. Have a great day!